Game number one now, ladies and gentlemen. It will not be too long before we see some action beginning. Ladies and gentlemen. Actually, Litacor, I'll let you start by introducing Lenok uh, after this uh, after this black screen becomes coloured. There, there we go. There we go. I see pixels. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this best of three between Lenok and the Viper in the Golden League. We do have on the right side, spawning in as the red Chinese, is going to be Lenok. And I know, Ozzy, you've been waiting for this one. Who do we have on the left side? On the left side, spawning in as the blue Rus player. It is the one, the only, the fan favorite, the man, the myth, the legend. It is the Viper. And damn, isn't he looking absolutely beautiful? What a great woodline he's got right there. Damn, Viper. How do you do it? How do you get woodline spawn so perfect like that? Don't you just love it? Don't you just love it, Lydical? Yeah, it's got a beautiful, beautiful hunting. Actually, 17 gold per minute looked way better than what actually it is. <laughs> Obviously, it's going to be boosted by the bounty, but, you know, you looked at that lumber camp, or uh, rather that uh, hunting cabin, and you're like, okay, that's a juicy one, 25, 30, 35, and then it's like, womp, 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 17. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It's definitely one of those things where it, it looks a lot better than it actually is. It's kind of like my brownie right now that I'm eating, Lidacore. Uh It looks a lot better than it actually is. Uh, but uh, Lenox slowly but steadily working towards this hunt of his opponent. Also picks up the boar or the uh, the, the wolf, rather. He's going to clean out five so far. Actually going to be able to go for the sixth one here. Won't be denying that seventh one. He'll say, you know what, Viper? You can have it. We'll give you a secondary prize, mate. Enjoy it. Uh, but now Viper going to be looking to try and chase down that wolf. Second wolf gets picked up by Lenok. Lenok going to be in a great position here. Always going to be looking to potentially deny this wolf from his opponent. We'll watch as Viper tries to take out this wolf. We'll be tracking the health points of it. It's a 12, 9, 6. Expect when he comes, when he turns for it is, is oh, he goes for the shot. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my lord, he manages to get it, Viper Viper takes it, he takes a second one as well. So the second scout coming in clutch right there for Viper, Lenok just going to be running the first, or the one scout, uh, and uh, almost just lures a couple balls for him in that way, or a couple wolves, rather. Yeah, that was a beautiful, beautiful micro there for Viper, you got to do the math in your head real quickly. Okay, he has one scout, I have two scouts, there is nine HP on that one wolf, who is going to take the final shot, and it's like, you have a split second to do that math, that is a spectacular show over there for Viper. 225 bounty for him. He also managed to collect quite a lot of sheep out there for himself. So spectacular start over here for Viper. He's going for wheelbarrow. Whereas on the other side for Lenok, he's got two Imperial officers out already. You can see that on the wow. overlay. That's a little uncharacteristic. That is kind of wild. Now, this is something I've actually seen from Lenok. I went and w watched one of his games, and I'm like, hold on a minute. Lenok's going for a double Imperial official opening? What is the thought process behind this? Uh, so th this this is going to be interesting. I, I do expect that we will see Lenok go for a fast second town center, uh, as well as a, a, a fast dynasty. So he will be looking to play 2TC Song Dynasty uh, against the Rus. And I think it's pretty much just going to be like, hey, Rus player, you do what you want. I'm just going to do my own thing as well. Like that sort of thing, right? You can take the relics. I'll see you in age four, all that good stuff. Uh, but uh, we'll have to look to see how he plays it uh, because he's under attack at the moment, under pressure on the gold mine. You can see Viper just harassing the villagers. Going to be causing a little bit of havoc here, but all the villagers are going to be walking away like Craig David does and uh, heading back towards the pavilion. Yeah, right now, Lenok is going to have sufficient gold to go up to Feudal Age. The concern is that he's not going to have enough gold for Dynasty. So there is a big question to be asked right now. You're going feudal. We talked about the possibility of the Barbican being dropped on a board. Are you doing that right now? Or are you going for the Imperial Palace back at home? Looks like it's going to be the Imperial Academy coming in for him. No Barbican so far. And Viper, he's going to use those scouts to great effect here. Will potentially deny that gold mine for quite long. And Linux is going to have to react to that in one way or another. Otherwise, it's just going to get torched down to the ground. Yeah, you can see his scout just sitting, lying in wait. Uh, but it's a smart move from Lenok to do this, to delay, d to delay rather, uh, that that uh, that, that uh, Barbican. Because it means that he's always got it in his back pocket to potentially go and put it out on the map, whether he wants to actually wait for Viper to invest in a hunting cabin, in a wooden fortress, and then go and be aggressive with it. That's always going to be an option. Otherwise, he can just leave it on the base. Maybe we don't see a Barbican at all. Yeah, it doesn't seem likely, especially with that mining camp being gone. And Lenok doesn't seem to be putting a lot of effort into even trying to repair that. So you got to wonder if he has a second gold mine that he's working on. And the answer is no. Instead, he's moving towards the stone mine. So we could see a second town center and then only later on a song dynasty for him. Meanwhile, on the other side for Viper, he's opening with a stable. Not a single villager moving towards the boars just yet. So he's going to open with a knight and potentially move towards the boars after that. It's a little bit more of the slower side with the start 
But against Chinese, it works perfectly fine because the Chinese won't really be putting up a lot of aggression early on anyways. Yeah, I, I, I think that's 100% on the money. Now, one of the things is, Lingnock has reached the second age. And I will just say at this point that we've got a very special VIP in chat at the moment. Someone who's going to be cheering loudly for Lingnock. It is, of course, Lingnock's girlfriend, Kim. Hello, Kim. I hope you're doing well. Welcome. Everybody say hi to Lingnock's real girlfriend. That is actually Lingnock's real girlfriend. Uh, we, we're incredibly uh, pleasured to have you here today, Kim. But now, Viper, going to be looking to move out towards the boar. You can see he's got a lot of villagers here lying in wait. Scout's going to be moving in position. And uh, wow, we, uh, we've got ourselves a game right here. Yeah, we got ourselves a game. Viper is moving in with the scouts, though. He sees the potential for a villager kill over here. Looks like all villagers do survive. So some of them being low HP is not going to deter our blue player Viper from going for that boar. But look oh, at that. No. It's going to be a tower rush. Uh, nope. Oh, nope, it's not so happening. so cheeky. You could see the way he was hovering. He really, really wanted it. And the scouts kind of peered through and they're like, don't you do it. I've got a knight. I will take you down. Don't even think about it, Lee Nock. You go back to the pavilion, mate. And that's exactly where he goes. Going to be having, having to head back there. But we'll take a look at Lee Nock's base now. I want to see how the base building is going. Because one of the big things for China is base building. If you like base building, if you're a fan of SimCity, if you're a fan of, you know, all that kind of good... RTS, you know, Anno, all those series, you're going to love the Chinese because they are the, the kings of base building. It's so important you build a good base. And we start to see that second town center already down for Lee Nock now before the seven minutes. What if I'm a fan of Minecraft, though? Does that count as a base builder? Not really, no. I mean, technically you do build bases, but it's just not the same. And you're probably 12. <laughs> oh, look at that. Throwing some punches at some other gaming communities out there. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm know. just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, gosh. Uh, it's all right, Kim. We know you are the real. We uh, we know Kim is the real. Oh, damn. All right. Now, Leenok has managed to get a, uh, a spearman out. You can see he's going to be looking to deny any kind of pressure on this mill. Imperative that he remains working on that, uh, on that mill. But now the staging ground comes in, and this is what concerns me. I spoke about this a little earlier, uh, that, uh, you know, the longer this game goes on, it's going to be better for Leenok. But the one thing to note, is that if Viper goes for the throat a little bit before Lenok's ready, that it's not going to be good for Lenok. He needs to prepare himself. He needs to get himself ready. He needs to make sure he's got his safe food resources coming in. And then he's got a, a decent mass of units coming out. So we'll look to see how Lenok battles it. Whether he's going to go for a more horseman-focused approach. Whether he thinks that archers are going to be the best choice for him. Or whether he goes for those Jogunus. Now, Viper is going for a very aggressive play over here. You could see for a brief moment, the blacksmith was dropped. He already has knights out. The archers were also spotted by Lenox, so he should know that, oh boy, that's going to be a ton of pressure coming at me. And I don't think that Lenox is up to Song Dynasty just yet. He's still in Tang, which obviously is not a big deal right now for him because he's got two town centers. The concern is that his berries are now getting pressured. He's just now dropping the stable, getting the first horseman out. His gold mine was denied, and Viper could do a tremendous amount of damage with just a handful of units over here. Lenok is in a tough spot here. Yeah, it's not looking pretty for him because this mill is on the front line, and you can see the horsemen are now coming out. He's looking to stick to a classic composition. This is more the, the 2TC comp because you don't have access to the Jogunu, so it doesn't really make sense uh, that you would be making them. But um, yeah, the spearmen plus the the, uh, the the horsemen, it works really well together in tandem, the way that they play off each other. The difficult thing is knowing when to engage because as as the Rus, having the ranged units, you're always going to be able to engage because you, you, it's your job to push forward. It's your job to take out uh, as many units as you can uh, before that real, that pressure comes through. Uh, but now we can see a villager does go down. Keep in mind, Lenok does have the villager lead at the moment. He's up by five villagers despite losing that villager. Does get the outpost up. Ideally, you'd like to even see a Barbican come out of him, but it's a very expensive ask for him at this point in time. There will be a battering ram coming through shortly for Viper. We can see that Siege Engineering is in the works and it's not looking pretty. This could be a very quick game right now. Yeah, this could be a very quick game because those army numbers are looking so, so good for Viper. He's at 21 army as opposed to 10. Four horsemen, five spearmen right now for Lenok, but he's already making a farm transition and that's a terrible time to do it. He's just oh. confined into his base so much and that farm investment is going to take a lot of time to pay off. Time that Lenok does not have. Oh, Lenok, it's not looking pretty right now. Lenok's girlfriend going to be very upset with this first game, unfortunately. Uh, this is never a good time to be making farms. Before 10 minutes is China getting farms out. Uh, ideally, he wants to be moving out of the map. He wants to be on his berries up towards the north. He wants to be on those deer. He wants to be on those berries down towards the south. He just wants to be doing anything but making farms. He's got his second town center. He's, he's in his happy place, but his happy place is not much longer going to be his happy place because there is a battering ram that is finished for the Viper, and Viper is moving 
in intently. And one of the interesting things to know, Viper has also added in Spearman. So just when you thought you were going to be doing this whole cute little, you know, horseman Spearman combo, well, now you need archers as well because the Spearman just single-handedly counter you every single way. This is not looking pretty right now for Lenok. Not at all. I mean, the Spearman numbers, plain and simple, are way better for Viper. So he could win this battle even without a single archer being out there. The tower is going to get taken down. And the thing is that that stable is also so far out in the open that the battering ram could take it down. This is a disaster for Lenok right now. He's going to have to play this on patiently, try to amass an army, force a decisive engagement. The problem is that Viper knows very well that this is going to be a full feudal game and he's got a chance to win this one in the next few minutes. Yeah, this is... Uh, I suspect this game is probably going to be over uh, very, very, very soon. It's not looking pretty right now for Lenok. He's trying his best to hold on, but look at the military difference. Viper with 42 military, 17 for Lenok. Lenok is barely ahead in villages. I say barely. He's got 11 villages more than Viper. That's a pretty decent amount, considering he's also got the IOs out as well, the Imperial officials. Uh, but uh, now we can see that the infrastructure for Lenok is going to be going down. So not only has Lenok now invested in that second town center, he's invested in those farms, but he's also going to have to make more infrastructure infrastructure as well because he is losing absolutely everything now that second town center becomes a very big point of focus yeah that's gonna be the point of focus both production buildings went down Lenok rebuilt his archer range back at home the problem is that he simply doesn't have time to mass his forces and you see viper feels that there is blood in the water he's even going to commit the spearman against that town center town center already down to 50 percent hp villagers evacuated from the wood line it's starting to become a now or never scenario here for Lenok. And the villagers finally do get pulled. We can see them moving out towards the battering rams. They're going to be looking to neutralize this position, but the town center continues to burn. The town center finally getting rep re uh, repaired up at this point in time. Spear's going to be out on the front line, but the archer's doing such a great job against them. Meeting the archers or meeting the spears with the enemy spears is just not a terrible uh, or not a good engagement there for Lenok. And now Lenok going to be moving around towards his villagers, trying to cover it. You can see the, there's 10 villagers inside that town center, but the town center continues to burn. All the units continue going down for Lenok. More ramps coming up for Viper at the same time. Lenok going to be moving in towards the economy and Lenok taps out. Good game. Gets called Viper victorious in the first game in a swift, decisive victory decisive swift confidence from viper and really this is the textbook of the feudal age aggression of Rus. get yourself the boar and go for the flood of spearmen archers out there and the problem for Lenox simply was that he didn't have map control he had a forward gold which obviously wasn't favorable and it really seemed like he was basing his strategy on being able to drop a tower on that boar and denying that after that was unsuccessful it was just a little too late because imperial officer is this imperial officer is that no matter how well you can produce units if you don't have the resources for it. And that was the case for Lenok. Yeah, this kind of upsets me to see Lenok go out this way because I've, I've watched him play this matchup before and he always seems to go for two town center. And I'm not sure why that is. I I, I think he thinks that it's 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 viable. But I, every single time I watch people like Viper uh, play against it, it just it never goes well for the Chinese player. I think maybe if he'd reassessed the scenario, maybe and, and gone for a, a quick dynasty, that would have been able to help him out a bit more. Because then at least he's got a Barbican in the base, he's able to defend. Can think about getting that that Chokunu out, which is kind of like you know you got rock paper scissors, and then you got the Chokunu, which is on the sideline, which has got you know it, sure rock looks tough, but when you got three scissors all trying to cut the rock at the same time. It's a little bit of a different scenario. But uh, we'll move on to the second game. Lenox Chinese unsuccessful and Viper moves forward in the series 1-0. Keep in mind, this is a best of three. So Viper now on match point. Big win over here for Viper. And really, one thing I can think about here for Lenox for dropping that second town center is that he knows that there is going to be pressure coming his way. So one thing he's thinking about is, okay, what if I drop my second town center early so I have a bit more defense to my base? But as you pointed out, Maybe a fast dynasty could be more reasonable with the Barbican out there. It wasn't really an option though this time because he simply lost that mining camp even before getting up to Feudal Age and that's where things started going pretty badly. But moving forward, it is going to be now King of the Hill coming in, Abbasid versus English with an English oh. and a Chinese ban. I'm feeling very sorry for Lenok right now. I've watched enough to Muslim games to know that this is not a good matchup for the Abbasid dynasty. English love this matchup. They love this map. They, they seem to do incredibly well. The, the outpost flood, uh, you know, just pushes in towards that Abbasid dynasty base. They somehow manage to, to separate the main TC and the second TC. And then they just go in for the kill. 